What's up guys, it's me Blake Morse and I'm here at day three of THQ's epic uh, New York City gaming event and today is all about Homefront. As you may know, it's North Korea versus uh, the United uh, States uh, last bastion of hope. We're gonna play a little multiplayer, do some interviews and uh, rock the fuck out like we always do. So let's fucking do this shit. All right. So this is this is kind of a crazy ass game. Like North Korea invades the uh, West Coast and uh, takes over America. Yeah, we really wanted to tell a story of an occupied America. Typically in our genre, it's the super soldier from America going to save the day in a desert or jungle or ice planet and being safely swept away in a heli. But uh, we wanted to twist that, flip it, so that now we're being occupied. And uh, to tell that story, we picked North Korea as the aggressor. I've been playing it a lot lately. We, we play it every day back at headquarters. I think it's an absolute blast. It's fun. I and mean, I'm not going to spoil everything they want to talk about, about how it has all these vehicles and ground combat and fast pace and, and uh, the systems and the new feature we're going to introduce today. So the game actually starts out uh, in Montrose, Colorado, and basically the whole single player campaign is pretty simple. We work with John Milius, the writer of Apocalypse Now and Red Dawn, to deliver this. It's a resistance cell, simply securing fuel and trying to move it to the west coast for the greater good and a greater offensive. Yeah, when I think of uh, tactical points in America, I think Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> well, we wanted to deliver this familiar has become alien feel, and what better than just suburbia, regular America. You know, not some landmark place, you may see one later in the game, but uh, we wanted to show the, the resistance struggle and what it's like for just you know blue collar Americans trying to survive in this brutal occupation. Yeah, yeah. well I noticed you had uh, San Francisco in the background. We're from the Bay Area right. and I think it was smart of North Korea to attack San Francisco and not Oakland because I live out there and I'm pretty sure we have more artillery than North Korea. Yeah, also we couldn't get the shots we wanted in Oakland. They don't have quite the dramatic landscape that San Francisco does. So. Oh, <laughs> no, it's it's beautiful. It's eclectic. It's 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 in a new renaissance. We, we live in New York. We know what eclectic is all about. <laughs> Um, so, so today we're checking out a new multiplayer mode. Uh, you have an AI general commanding uh, your unit, right? Yeah, it's called Battle Commander. So each team has a Battle Commander trying to win the game for their team. And what they do is they recognize someone that's doing good and they'll give them a buff to propel them along. The enemy Battle Commander will recognize that and designate him as a priority threat and direct his team to take him out. So Battle Commander adds this layer of strategic depth and emergent gameplay to the match. Um, so our existing game modes like Team Deathmatch and Ground Control. So we're going to be starting you out with those modes and then we're going to be adding Battle Commander in later on as you're playing so you can really see how it changes the dynamic of the game, you know, adds to that emergent gameplay. We're also going to be keeping an eye out for any players that reach the 5 star level and we might have a special reward for you. In addition to the player who manages to take you out, we'll also get a reward. The way the premise uh, focuses on the multiplayer game is it provides us a context to the action. It allows you to recreate the skirmishes between the fractured and scattered U.S. military forces after a national EMP strike and the advancing Greater Korean Republic Army. This all happens across the ruins of suburban America, a country that we're all very familiar with, has been depicted in film many times, but it really quite hasn't been depicted the way we're doing it in Homefront, which is as a partially occupied state. Our gameplay goals with multiplayer has really been to create a large-scale warfare experience. As your threat level goes up, uh, if you're the aggressor, you gain more and more buffs, such as increased speed or health or you know what have you. On um, the same token, the enemy battle commander assigns you as more and more of a threat. He'll put more people against you and a larger bounty on your head in terms of battle points. Yeah. One thing I really like about this game uh, that kind of separates it from like the Call of Duties for me is like you have to be doing really badass to get anything badass in Call of Duty. This seems to kind of hand you all the tools you need to be just as badass as like an experience. Player. Yeah, we wanted to have a low barrier entry and for everyone to be able to use the cool toys. So you don't have to hit an 11 kill streak in order to get the cool vehicle like a chopper or something. You know, if you're helping your team win, you're earning battle points. We have the save or spend philosophy. Save up those points, earn the great vehicle like an Abrams tank or an Apache heli. Everyone can use it. 
So let's talk about the battle point system. Like, how does the battle point system work in this game? Certainly, like I touched on, anything you do to help your team win will accrue battle points for you, especially taking objectives. That's where that's where you cash in on the register, right? So also killing people, uh, avenging a fallen teammate, defending an objective. What you can do is you can either save or spend, like I mentioned, and you can use them on small yet potent drones or airstrikes, or you can save them up for vehicles. Uh, also, with vehicles, we have our spawn in vehicle system, which directs you right at the action. You know, what we're trying to deliver in home front is large scale warfare with infantry shooter style intensity. Uh, I've noticed a trend in these kind of uh, militaristic first person shooters of putting out crazy collector's editions with like weird stuff in it. Do you guys like know if you're going to be doing anything like that for a uh, home front? Uh, we haven't announced anything like that. Right now, Chaos Studios is turning and burning to get this baby out the door. So, uh, you know, if we announce something that down the road, just stay tuned. Cool. Um, what kind of stuff can we look forward to that you feel is really unique outside of the multiplayer system? Like, w what compels the story in Homefront and gives it uh, that unique essence that sets it apart from other villages? Well, that's an easy one. You, you ask what sets us apart and you touch on the story and that's it right then, right there. It's our story. It's our speculative fiction. We worked with John Milius, the writer of Apocalypse Now and Red Dawn. We worked with the CIA, expert in North Korean affairs, in order to create a really rich universe and narrative. And that's what really translates through in the game. So we do the Wolverines make a cameo? Yeah, they just might. Just might. I got my fingers crossed. <laughs> well, uh, we're really looking forward to the game. It's looking great. And uh, yeah, s stay tuned for more. When does it come out? March 2011, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and of course PC. Sweet, and uh, you guys just announced uh, today with the 360 that we'll be getting some exclusive content as well, right? Yeah, as a first release IP, we're really, really stoked that Microsoft is putting their full muscle behind us, so we have a great you know, deal and relationship in place with them. Suburbs, multiplayer and maps can be exclusive to the Microsoft platform, and Xbox 360, Xbox Live audience are going to have a first taste at DLC. Sweet, alright. Well, thanks for talking with us today. Thank you.